So I'm taping down my paper, making sure that the border is nice and straight because I want it to show when the painting's finished. And I'm using a 3 8 border this time. Sometimes I used a quarter of an inch, sometimes half an inch. Decided to go halfway between. I'm spraying down the paints because it makes them easier to use when you start to paint. And I'm wetting the paper because I want to work wet on wet and have a nice light background underpainting color. A variety of the colors. I have some raw sienna I'm going to put on the sand dollar first and a little bit of cerulean blue. And then I'm going to add some cobalt blue and burnt sienna, nice and light with the burnt sienna. And I, I go a little bit dark, too dark with it here. I, I regretted that. I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, but I'll fix that later on. Some permanent rose and then a touch of viridian, viridian green because we're working on complementary colors and those two colors sort of set next to each other will be a beautiful part of the underpainting. The uh, cobalt, cobalt blue and the ultramarine blue, they are nice complementaries to the burnt sienna and the raw sienna. We can use the complementaries next to each other so that they look beautiful or we can mix them. Now I'm putting a little salt on the rocks, not on the sand dollar but on the rocks and that will make some little sparkles on the rocks and um, designs and I let that absorb into the pigment and it will lift a bit of pigment when it's dry. I'll just go over it with the hairdryer to make sure everything is dry before I proceed. Now I've got two brushes. I have my number two black black silver velvet and my number six. I'm going to use the two for the little details, these little holes in the sand dollar. And then I will do more of the background with the other brush. Now we don't have these sand dollars in British Columbia with the holes in them. I was reading about them and they come from islands in the Caribbean and places in the South Atlantic. But I liked, I just liked the design. I liked having something darker on the sand dollar so it would be more interesting. And I would have liked to have gone out and photographed sand dollars on the beaches here, but there was an awful lot of snow when, the, when I was painting this and I just didn't want to dig my car out of the snow and go to the beach. I don't think I would have found anything to photograph on the beach this time of year anyway. So I use Google Images. And I combined the pebbles and the sand dollar to make the image that I wanted to make. So now I'm painting the background. I'm doing um, a really nice dark color and negative painting so I can see clearly where my darks are going to be and the contrast between the darks and the lights in the painting. That will help me with all of the mid-tones. It'll help me put in the shadows and the shading. If I go from these very light shades to directly to the shading and the mid-tones, I'm probably going to get too dark too quickly and make poor judgments about what colors I need to use and what values. So I'm getting these, these nice darks in. My dark brown is a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'll vary the ratios of those. You'll see I, I keep putting more burnt sienna in or more. Uh, ultramarine blue. The green that I have mixed next to it started off as raw sienna with cerulean blue and then I added a bit of uh, cobalt blue and then I added a little bit of um, yellow ochre to make it more opaque. And at this stage I am using yellow ochre because I want the color to be more opaque, stronger, sandy looking. This will be my dark background under the rocks. And I will put some dark, darker shadows in later. But for now, I want to, I really want to make sure I get those darks in so I can see how my sand dollar is going to stand out. And I want to keep that background wash nice and wet because I'm working all around the rocks. And if it dries at any point, I'll get brush strokes and streaks. I want to make sure it stays nice and wet so I can work wet and wet and the colors will blend. That means I have to keep have to keep adding pigment, have to keep adding water to make sure my puddles of paint are lovely and moist. And that way I can work around the painting with no 
no areas drying before I'm ready. And you'll see I keep I, I mix different colors into them. I don't worry about mixing the same brown or the same green. What you want is a, a lovely variety. And if you use the same basic colors from all the way through, it will all pull together. It will it will complement everything in your painting. So don't worry about trying to mix the exact same color up again. I prefer to have big variety of colors, a variety of browns and greens and sandy colors. And I've, I've speeded this video up, so it is two times the speed. So you don't need to think that you have to paint quite this fast. The whole project took me uh, about two hours because there was drying time and I left it overnight to, to dry thoroughly. But when I edited it down, I edited it to, I think, 33 minutes. So you don't get too bored watching paint dry. But at least you'll get a kind of a an idea of how the process goes painting these these rocks. I, I want the sand dollar to be the biggest and the lightest part of the painting it's because it's it's the center of interest it's the focal point the rocks I think when I looked at the painting round finished I think I went a little bit too dark with the rocks I think I would have liked to have kept some of them a bit lighter but that's that's what happens and sometimes I will do a painting two three four times to practice different things in the painting to try and figure out what values to use what different hues to use and that's okay that's why we paint sometimes nobody ever sees our paintings they're just a joy of learning something <laughs>